The Toronto Raptors have signed Greg Monroe to a one-year veterans uh, minimum contract, uh, which is $2 million. Um, Greg Monroe will be brought in to uh, back up Jonas Valanciunas and uh, Matt Devlin, our Raptors play-by-play play by play voice on Sportsnet joins Michael Tragos and myself. Are they going to, they're going to, they could sell tickets to Raptors practices, Matt, just to watch him and Jonas go up against each other. I would buy tickets to that in practice. Well, well, I'll, I'll say this. I mean, they've gone at it before, as you know, and, and Greg Monroe uh, has had some big games in the past you know, against the Toronto Raptors. And I really like this addition. I think when you survey, and this was one of the things that you really notice, I think with the elite teams in the NBA uh, from a season ago, once this new money was brought into the NBA, can you get veterans to join your team to have on your bench depending upon what happens throughout the course of the season, an injury or just a matchup. And I think that this is really the first time that we're seeing a move like this that I really like. Last year in the playoffs, Jeff, you have C.J. Miles as your one veteran off the bench, and the rest were young players, as we know. So they really got their first taste of the postseason. Now, all of a sudden, you add a Greg Monroe to a very youthful bench, um, and I just like it. And and it, you know, he may he may there. There might be some games where he doesn't play at all. He might get 15 minutes. There might be a game where he gets 30 minutes. But I just think this is a really good sign. Does it, um, Matt, Matt, does this kind of uh, give any any indication to Nick Nurse's strategy going forward? Because, you know, like Greg Monroe, while he plays with a lot of bite, he's a he's a post player. He's not going to shoot any threes. Yeah. I don't think he's ever even yeah. attempted any. Um, does this yeah. kind of give any indication as to what Nick Nurse might be looking at, even off the bench? No, I think what it does is it gives you a veteran – uh, that's an excellent passer uh, that really gives you insurance off of the bench uh, more than anything. And, and in today's day and age, uh, where do you get your points, right? Analytically speaking, you know, everybody always talks about the three, but it's at the rim layups, dunks, right? He's not going to be a guy that's going to dunk the basketball, but he could be a layup guy, offensive rebound, defensive rebound. That's certainly what he's about. Um, And then also you can put him in the high post and he does an exceptional job of passing the basketball in the high post um, and being a facilitator. So it adds multiple dimensions to this, offense and I think that that's certainly something that you'll see with Nick Nurse I don't think that you know you're going to see a team that plays just one way I think that you're going to see a team that has levels to it not only offensively but defensively right so that when you get into the playoffs all of a sudden you're now not trying to bring in new things Mm. that have never been run before. You're bringing in things that you've tested out and tried along the 82 game schedule. And, you know, for a team like the Raptors, I mean, their payroll is something that's fourth highest in the NBA right now. 2.2 million for a guy who's, he's 28 years old. Like he's a veteran, but we're not talking a guy who's 38 and, and is probably going to need a, you know, need a defibrillator to get out, to get off the, uh, get off the bench. Well, look, he's, you know, somebody, as we, as we all know, look, he's not racing up and down the floor. Everybody gets all of that. Uh, we understand what sort of player uh, that he is. But as you said, he's crafty. He's somebody that has been around. He's 28 years of age, and it's $2.2 million. I mean, I think back to last year, every time I saw Jeff Green play, yeah. I know Jeff Green never became the player that – people thought he would be but you know for the 2.8 million 3 million they were paying him you're like man that's a great deal you know can the raptors eventually get to the point where they're going to be able to attract you know a veteran for this kind of money think about it think about all the years that you've covered the toronto raptors jeff how many really good and that's what greg Monroe, you know he's a solid pro have said yeah i'll take a one-year veteran minimum to come play for the toronto raptors to me 
that's a really good sign. Yep. And that's interesting. You mentioned that, Matt, because I wonder, does this get done if Kawhi is not in Toronto? Is this kind of the after effects of, you know, you've got a superstar in Kawhi Leonard, maybe a guy like Greg Monroe wants to sign because of that. Well, look at it. It's a great question. You know, we don't know the answer. It's, it, you know, because it's, you know, specul- you know, speculative, right? You know, is it a situation that we would know that he would sign? I don't know. Don't know the answer. But I do know that you now have a top five player in the NBA and Kawhi Leonard. How do you get that top five player to come to Toronto? Well, it's under the circumstance in which he was in in San Antonio, right? That's how you get a player like that Mm -hmm. at the end of his contract that was injured, that doesn't want to remain on the team that he is, and that you're able to give up a player that's a four-time all-star to go the other way. That is difficult as that is. You know, Masai looked around and said, okay, we have an opportunity here in this small window where we really need to take this chance to see we can go where we've never been before. And then ultimately what happens at the end of that, we'll see. You know, we'll see with what direction Kawhi decides to go, which will ultimately decide which way the future of this team will go more than likely. You know, I think most people, I mean, this has been such a tumultuous off season for the Raptors, but I think most people, whether you're a Dwayne Casey guy or, or, or De, you know, DeMar DeRozan guy or woman, whatever, every, I think people have kind of moved on by now. This is, you know, we all have our own opinions, but hey, this is the team. This is going to be the team going forward. I, I just, frankly, I can't wait for the season to start. Like a lot of people, yeah. I'm, I'm getting to the point where yeah. I want the season to start. But then... You know, Rudy Gay's comments over the weekend uh, comparing the Raptors and Spurs, which I don't know if they were – it wasn't really disappointing because, quite frankly, I'm not certain any of us should give a rat's ass what Rudy Gay says about anything, yeah. Matt. But right. is that a sign that, you know, the Raptors are going to have to put up with this all year, that, that, that we're going to have to put up with this sort of woe is DeMar DeRozan on the part of other players all year long? I don't think that they will. I think a lot of it changes when you win, right? And the expectations are that the Raptors are going, you know, to win, and they are going to be one of the top teams. I mean, think about the Boston Celtics and Isaiah Thomas and what transpired there and his conversations, right, with uh, Danny Ainge. And, you know, was it, I, I don't know. We don't know the answer to exactly that conversation that happened between uh, DeMar DeRozan and Masai Ujiri. Was it that they were just talking about next year? And so there was the assumption that, Hey, I am around, or was there a flat out question with the answer of, Hey, look at, you're not getting to, I don't know. I don't know that we'll ever know. Certainly DeMar felt that he, You know, he was a player that was told. um, And I think that, you know, maybe from looking into Masai's uh, piece of it as he, you know, he apologized and he said, you know, look, you know, communication could have been better um, along the way. But at the end of the day, you know, I think that everybody will ultimately move on. And I I don't think that it's going to be something that will hang over its head because I think that, You know, DeMar is going to go to San Antonio, and I think that that's a really good fit for uh, DeMar DeRozan there. Um, You're with a tremendous coach. You're with a great organization, um, and his approach to the game, I think, is very much a San Antonio-type approach to the game. You're in a non-state income tax state. I mean, things are going to work out well for him there financially. Um, And, you know, for the Toronto Raptors, you know, they're positioning themselves into the elite and the upper echelon, not only in the Eastern Conference, but in the NBA as they continue to evolve and grow. So I think that will, as the season goes on, Jeff, will be left behind.